managing busy experts. So these, uh, you are very likely, likely to get some resistance for people saying, um, you know, would, are you willing to be a steward? Are you willing to have this, you know, to answer a support request? Or is it, I don't know, I don't, like I'm super busy, I don't know if I can do it. So it, it's helpful to come up with a little bit of sort of, if, if you are asking people to be in that role to, to have a practical understanding with them on response time, you know, like what is, what's, what is great, <laughs> what is good, and then what is unacceptable. Um, and, and be, understand that these people, they're not sitting around just waiting for a ticket so they can turn around in 10 minutes. You know, you, you never know what it is. And having more than one person is helpful too. So that if someone's on leave or they're busy or whatever, you can, you can get back. So the first thing is to think about what are the, um, you know, empathize with the people you're asking to help these experts and, and, and let it be known that you're trying to reduce the amount of time that they're going to, they're going to spend. And I guess the, the first point is, and it may be hard to uh, um, communicate this without kind of telling a bigger story, but to know that the alternative is, you know, if, if you've already sort of established that there is all this knowledge and expertise in your brain, all right? Uh, so Deb, we need all this information from you about how um, the particular, you know, how that student information system is working and you have all this knowledge that nobody else does. Marcy, you have all this knowledge about how our accounting rules go and how we do everything. And uh, so one step is, which is a common error that most people do, is they start off and say, all right, Deb, we have this project. I need you to document everything you know and get, get that back to me in a month. And same thing with Marcy. Well, you end up getting nothing back from that. So you say, you know, the alternative is, Deb, I need you to document like 10 things. Your, what do you think are the most important 10 things? And then I would need you to be available if a question comes up to respond to, you know, an 11th thing or 12th thing or the third thing and, and be able to get back and answer to us within a couple of days or within a day or whatever, however you want to establish that. It might depend on how critical, mission critical these things are. And given that deal, I think 100 times out of 100 people are going to say, oh, I'll take the second deal. Right? But if you present it to them just by saying like, hey, I, you, know, you don't set it up that way and you say, hey, Deb, we have this new thing. I want you to drop whatever you're doing to answer these questions whenever they come up, right? If they don't understand the alternative or they understand why that you're doing it, you're going you're gonna to be unsuccessful. So first thing is just setting them up to understand why this is important, why you need this information, and why you're trying to get this stuff out of their brain and whether they're the, they're the only ones or, or part of a team of, of, of people who have that knowledge that you need to make available and how they're trying to be conscious of their effort and time, right? So that's, this is sort of in the data steward roles that those experts. Then lastly, um, the, the support triage role is, is the other thing too, is like you don't necessarily have to set them up beforehand. If you do, um, you can kind of offload some of that, um, you know, everyone needing to be kind of on the ready for everything and, and get that all set up by having a dedicated role or halftime role or whatever you think the demand is for someone to, to or a team of people to pick up, um, requests and then go find the, those experts and, and bring them in. So I, I really think this is actually um, kind of a required thing to do. I mean, like, even if, um, if you don't have a default support triage steward role, um, I don't know how you're going to be successful. Even if you do have, you know, nine out of 10 domains where you've got a very eager support, you know, person on there, Something's going to come up in that tenth domain, you know, or you know, maybe people are going to leave those roles. So having that that support triage role person who can take it and and be the um, utility infielder and figure out what needs to be done is really important. Um, so we've got Reese here who is going to take that role. So they're going to be the default role for requests that have come in. They'll find collaborators or subject matter experts internally, externally. Maybe they'll take a shot for it if they if they if if there isn't something on their own and facilitate whatever tasks they are as that proxy for those, for that expert. Uh, and then you can, you know, recruit and bring in these uh, experts as you have them, but, but the main thing is that recruiting from the collaborative.